talk about stop guessing, diagnosing, and fixing WordPress performance problems. Matt is the founder of Site District, a powerful and flexible WordPress hosting platform. He has a degree in computer engineering and started off his professional career as a member of the design team for AMD's first 64-bit processor. Matt is passionate about understanding and helping people solve technical problems. He feels that WordPress hosts should do as much as possible to provide good performance, security, and automation so you can focus on your business while your host takes care of the rest. He enjoys travel and has spent four years backpacking around the world. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see. Can you guys hear me on this? Should have wired up and turned on all right. All right, thanks everyone for coming to my talk. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be talking about performance today. Um, I've got quite a bit of content to cover, so I'm going to go pretty fast. If I'm lucky, I'll have some time at the end for questions. If not, you can find me out there in the like, post with all the nice little padded seats in the back there. So. All right, let's get going. All right, so first, a little bit about me. This is probably mostly repeat from the intro, but uh, I grew up in Arizona and then I went to school down at the University of uh, Arizona in Tucson, spent another four years down there studying computer engineering, and I worked on, I moved to Austin, Texas, lived there for a couple of years, and worked on the design team for the first 64 bit processor, and that's a picture of it, and that was my little piece up there at the top. <laughs> and uh, after that, I left and I took a backpacking trip and went around the world, it was supposed to be for a year and a half, and ended up being three and a half years, and I only made it half there. Um, I got involved with WordPress in 2011 when I started doing some plugin development and some backend server um, and service development uh, for our client. And that project ended up being successful and went well. And a few years later, they had hundreds of, um, hundreds of websites on WordPress, a bunch of clients, and but they were having server uh, performance and security issues. So uh, then I ended up starting what has become Site District. And we're now hosting hundreds of clients, thousands of websites on our platform. All right, an outline of today's talk. So I probably should stand back so I'm not turning my head. We'll talk about first why performance matters and how do we actually measure it. Uh, talk about hosting and what effect it has on it. Uh, then we'll talk about your the server response time. We'll talk about the full page load when someone views a page. Uh, just a few words on caching, and then, because I'm crazy, and if we have a little bit of time, we'll do a quick demo at the end. So first, why does performance matter? So, about three seconds. I'm, not a, <clears throat> I'm not used to these guys, but I think they have the best marketing message, at least, that kind of sums it up. So how long does it take to lose a customer? 2.7 seconds, they say. That's the amount of time before someone visiting your website will, will stop and then start go looking for your competitors. So that's one way, and just summing it up, conversions and page abandonment. So if you've got paying customers, then you could be losing business if your site's not fast. It wastes your time while you're developing and working on your site, especially at the back end and the WordPress admin is slow. Uh, perception of your visitors, your customers, when they come to your site, they have to wait for a page to load for too long, and then that's going to leave a negative impression on them. Your Google ranking, if your site is extra slow, that has some effect on that. Um, no one probably besides people at Google know exactly how much that is, but it's been published and said that's a factor. Uh, your client satisfaction, if you're an agency or you're building lots of WordPress sites for for different people, then they're more likely to come back for a new site or redesign or to refer you to other clients if you build them a fast website. And then I'd like to make the bold claim that speed equals happiness. And that's one of the biggest reasons. So to kind of drive that point home, think about this for a second. All right, so let's do a quick survey here with a show of raise of hands. How many of you have worked on or developed on a site that was slow or became slow? All right, everyone look around and see how many people are raising their hands. Keep them up. Well, we got, we got some more questions. How many have, you, have spent time trying to speed up a slow site? Have given up on trying to speed up a slow site? <laughs> have switched hosting providers because your site is slow? How many of you switched off plugins one at a time trying to speed up a site? 
A lot of hands on all these. How many have a slow site now? All right. So this talk hopefully will be good for all of you. So I have a hypothesis, and that is, why don't developers and designers and site owners speed up or fix their slow sites? Well, that's because slow is comfortable, and optimization is often risky and uncertain. You don't know how much, um, you don't know how to make the site faster, and you don't know if or how much uh, faster your site can be. And so it's not that you don't want your site to be faster, it's that you just don't make it a priority. So I want to speak a little bit about priority. And I'm going to define priority as value divided by effort. And I started off by talking about the value of performance and speed. Um, that, so but what about effort? If effort goes down, then priority goes up. And so my goal today is to show you how to minimize that effort. So first, before we try to fix performance, we need to figure out how to measure it and understand it. So some basics about paid speed loading. So I've created this diagram here. It's kind of a simplified waterfall view of what happens when it, uh, your browser loads a page and the uh, browser loads a page up and displays it to you. The first thing is you'll put your domain in the address bar, type it up, and then your browser needs to do a DNS query and look out, find out where that site lives, and then it'll make a connection to the server, and then it'll uh, set up a secure connection if your site's running HTTPS, and these days all your sites should be. Uh, it'll then send that request and wait for the server to respond back and send back the initial page content. It's just one text file that's HTML in it. Once the browser receives that, then it can start doing a bunch of things in parallel. It can start parsing that HTML, it'll find out what else it needs to load, such as JavaScript, uh, CSS files, fonts, images. It'll start making requests for those, and then it'll actually do the, the hard work of rendering and painting everything on the screen so you'll see the web page show up in your browser. So this first part here, actually just that part right there is often called the time to first click. And that is from WordPress. That's WordPress running PHP and talking to the MySQL database at the end before it sends something back. How fast should that time to first click be? So for work, obviously, the faster the better. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't talk about page caching yet, but we'll, let's, we want to start by not covering up any performance issues. So I want to see how fast that time to first light is without any page caching turned on. So I consider very fast to be 50 to 150 milliseconds. Um, fast, 150 to 300, good, under half a second. Average, slow, very slow. And some sites that I've seen have taken 15 to 30 seconds, actually even 45 seconds to return back that page back to the browser. So you're sitting there staring at a blank screen for 30, 15, 30, 45 seconds sometimes. So for WordPress, I think under half a second is a pretty good goal, at least for uncached speed. So now, how do we test that and see what your time to, your time to first light is? And so one of my favorite tools is this uh, Chrome extension. And it's called Page Performance, and there's a link to it there too. And what this does, it just sits in your Chrome toolbar there, and every time you load a page, no matter where, what page it is, it's got this little icon available here at the top, and you can click on it and drop down, and it'll show you what the time to first bite was for that page. Another way is you can actually use Chrome itself and open up the developer tools, and you can jump down to the little three little dots on the top there, down here, and developer tools, and then you want to select the network tab. And you will need to reload the page if you do this. Um, the network tab doesn't populate unless the developer tools are open. So you can have the page, open this up, reload, and then you can click, kind of hover on the little bar here, and it'll tell you down here what your time to first play is. And then one of my favorite tools is, and this is something you can share with other people too after you run the test, is web page test. And so that's a web page test out of If you go there, you'll see a screen like this. Um, I recommend actually logging in like with your Google account or something because then you don't seem to need to do the like capture thing and identify stream lights. Uh, and if you, when you do this though, first, uh, probably you want to set some settings here. So we're going to try and test the best case uh, speed for your website. So first of all, pick a test location that is near your server. 
So wherever your server is actually located. Then set the connection speed to native, which means it's not going to try to slow it by loading down, pretending you're on a slower network. Um, set the number of tests to one, but then click the repeat uh, view and the first and repeat view. And what that'll do you is give you it'll run the test twice, but once showing the effects of browser caching if someone were to visit your site and then they continue browsing it, or if they come back later, usually that second load will be faster. And then click the capture video button, and this allows to see a film strip view. We'll actually be able to see what people are seeing in, in, with a timeline uh, as your site is loading. And so once you run the test, this is, you'll get a page back that looks like this. And we're generally trying to optimize the time to first play and uh, speed index, and that's something you'll just find on web page tests. So we're going to ignore the load time, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. So the speed index, they define that as the time at which the visible parts of the page are displayed, it's basically an average of that. So <clears throat> web page test has a film strip view and it'll show you over time with a little label here as far as how much time has passed, how much of the page is shown up at that time. And so the lower the better on this, and this is action. Why does this matter? Because this is what people are actually seeing on your site. And there's also a waterfall view. I won't go into this, but it's, it's a diagram that's similar to the one I showed earlier in the presentation, but it's specific to the page you actually just tested and has a lot more detail than it for the actual requests going on. This is the film strip view I talked about. We can see now here in this test here on the WordCamp website that the user was looking at a Brent Blink screen for 0.7 seconds or so. Not very long at all. At 0.8 seconds, started to fill in. The image kind of showed up in, you know, just a teeny bit after, and then the menus and the cookie bar finally filled in at 1.2 seconds. But right here, at less than a second, we can see that most of the web page is already there. So that's what people are seeing. That's what they're waiting for. They can start interacting with it. People are going to see things before they even touch it anyway. So you want to just get enough up there so they can see it. So, And even though the load time was a little bit longer, that the actual time that the page rendered was a little bit was less. So, other speed testing tools. How many people know or have used GT Metrics? All right, or, or Pingdom. All right. So, I don't recommend GT Metrics. <laughs> and so the reason for that is they list a bunch of things on the site that, to me, will lead you down a rabbit hole that you shouldn't be focusing on. Uh, they also require you to log in. Uh, to see a lot of this other stuff that's actually interesting. So I find web page tests much more useful, so I recommend checking that out. And just to sum it up, you want to remember, is whatever tool you're using, is it showing you what your actual users are actually, or what your users are actually experiencing? So we don't care about the numbers, we don't care about bullet points, or we don't care about some page score, like grade or speed. We care about what people to your site are actually seeing. All right, so let's talk about what makes up that time to first bite a little bit more. And so there's some two main factors in that server response time, which is often the bottleneck for your page load. First is your hosting provider. I'll talk more about, I'll talk more about that later. And next is your website implementation. And with WordPress, that means your theme and your plugins. All right, so I've got an interactive part here, and so I forgot to announce this at the beginning. If you've got your computer open or you've got your, your mobile device, go to this page right here, and you should see something like this. And hopefully if this is connected right, if you start putting, you can put in your own domain in here. You can put in some client sites you've developed, put in your friend's site, WordPress sites. And uh, if you fill this in, it should start populating up here in real time on both your screens and this main screen up here. So what this does is we've built a tool that will go off and it'll test the time to first byte for your site and it will show it up in here. If you're embarrassed or you have a really slow site, don't put it in here because everyone's going to see it. <laughs> but uh, So we can see it's starting to fill up now a little bit. And remember I said the time, ideally your time to first byte should be under half a second. Well, that's right over here. Most of the sites we're seeing so far are showing up over here. So they could probably be definitely a lot faster. 
than they are. So. All right. You guys can keep running that um, if you'd like, testing more sites. On the right here, I've kind of tried to look up the hosting providers and classify them here in terms of the average speed from slowest to fastest. And if they're faster than the bottom here, then it falls off. So next, I want to talk about, jump back and talk about WordPress hosting. So does your, your hosting provider, yes, it does matter. It matters a lot. So is better hosting the silver bullet for your speed? Much of the time, actually, it is, yes. Other times, well, you have a slow site with a lot of plugins, a lot going on there. It, can, it may be faster on better hosting, but it might not yet be fast. How do you determine if your hosting is a problem? So, well, certain hosting providers are known to be well optimized, consistently fast, and not have performance issues. Other providers, it depends on the plan, box, time of day, server configuration. And uh, stuff like that. So, other some hosting providers are just known to be consistently slower too. So, uh, another indicator is what web server is your host running. This is slightly more technical, but I try to keep it simplified. So, most custom managed WordPress platforms are, are running like Nginx and kind of custom stack, and it's a little bit more optimized. The number of those people, the number of those hosts are small. More common is you'll find a lot of Hosts that are running uh, cPanel and Apache together, and anyone can spin up their own hosting company uh, uh, using that. And the takeaway from this is that if your hosting provider has cPanel available, it's actually an indication that your site could probably be faster. So you could also go through a checklist and check hey, does your server have a whole bunch of stuff on it? I'm not going to go through these, and that's kind of the point. So that's a big long list, and plugins aren't going to help you with these. And so if you're a server administrator or you're self-hosted, you might take some notes, write those down. Otherwise, you might be uh, thinking that. <laughs> so what's a better way? Again, like we talked about the page loading. Um, we don't necessarily care about a checklist of items. They're important, and if you're building hosting, then yes, they're important. But we want to measure you know, what your it's like how your, your own site is actually performing. So how do you know if your host is causing part or all of your speed problem? Or how do you know if your host has properly optimized your server? Well, it's not easy to verify reliably. If you don't want to go through that checklist, and even that might not cover it. Well, at least not while it's on your current host. So try another hosting provider. How? Put an exact copy of your site on another optimized uh, WordPress host. So there are several options for this. I've kind of rated them by how easy they are. The kind of average or harder is to use a backup or restore plugin. You can install a plugin on your, your current site and hosting provider, download the backup, restore it on, on a new location. Uh, you can use a migration or a plugin that's for kind of more integrated with a hosting provider. Or you can do something that's a little bit more fully automated. And I'll jump through those. So the backup, here are some backup and restore plugins some popular options that could be used. And you can grab these from the slides later. Uh, some hosting provider uh, plugins that they built for migration. Here's a couple more that are uh, provided by a service called BlogVault. And uh, for migrating to Pantheon and WP Engine, they have a plugin that uses that service. Um, and then we actually have an import that's, I think, faster and simpler than all these. Um, there's more information on there. I'm not going to show any slides or anything about it now, but we'll get time at the end. I think we'll be able to show it off. So now let's say you've got your site copied over a new, a new host. How you test it and check to see if it's faster. Well, go back and use those tools that I just showed you a little bit before a web page test. And then we have some tools later in that five times. It's, it's pretty short. I'll show you some of the tools that we have. We'll let you, you saw already the tool that will just test one test a bunch of sites and throw them all up on the screen. That's some others that let you crawl through your site and uh, see how it's performing. So let's talk about cost of hosting. And a, um, a friend of mine came up with this term, and I thought it was a great, great term. I didn't find it on the internet, so I threw a little TM up there in the corner of it. So you heard it here first. 
And you all heard Bridget speak this morning, right? Everyone heard Bridget? All right. So earlier this year, Bridget had decided, put up on Twitter, she decided she's going to write a blog post about uh, hosting, and her $25, you know, as an argument for managed hosting. And then she wrote the, this blog post, and she said, $25, that's what my managed hosting cost with Pressable. And some people think it's expensive. And, um, so she argues, if it's for your business, is it worth it? And so she got some uh, funny replies, good replies to this, and she posted some, some more stuff on her blog. Um, there's a link to it, too. Some of the replies, $25 a month on donuts. <laughs> Amy, I believe, speaking this afternoon, Starbucks. And then I think one of the best replies, at least the one I like best, is, is this one here. And so, and Bridget had some final thoughts. So, your time is money. So if your your host is not that fast, or you've got other issues to deal with, then you know you're you're wasting your, your money that way too. So that's the kind of summing up the arguments for hosting. It's pretty much what the people reply to from a blog. Um, if it's for your business, it's important. Um, you get a lot of things with more managed hosting that other places will upsell or they won't be bundled, you'll just upgrade. And again, and finally, is your time worth it? So. I've actually gone through, from my experience from importing and migrating and testing a bunch of the sites over the last few years, I kind of went through and tried to rank the hosting providers here by, this is just for performance from what I've seen. <coughs> And so I put up this slide last week at, at Riverside, and then afterwards I, I got a comment, like, I got this comment. But wait, uh, my, my site's pretty fast, but I'm in a slow column. I think my site's fast, so I thought, hey, that's a good question. So I tried to come up with some replies to that. And things to consider are, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, ignorance is bliss, and your site might load in two seconds, but you just haven't seen it load in one second on another place. Page caching. Are, is your site loading quickly because of page caching? What if you're logged in? Or what if you're on the WordPress admin in the back end? Is it still as fast? And then yes, maybe it's good enough. If you and your customers are happy, then great. It's fast enough. And then mobile. Always consider mobile. Something that loads fast on your desktop might be a little bit slower on a phone over a, a mobile network. So test it. You can use web page test to set the connection speed a little bit lower to see how long it will take to, for that page to load if you're on a 4G, 3G network, something like that. So you might be thinking, wow, I just spent 20 slides talking about hosting. So yes, it is that important. And so just this last week, I'll just sum up all the underlying parts here. I posted a, on a, a reply to a question on a, on a popular Facebook group with 11,000 members on it. And this is, I had a little bit of a dialogue with one of the, the guys on there. So he tried the other suggestions, and the results were not worth it. I spent five days, oh, sorry. I, and he said, the results were not worth it, but now I believe that the web host is the key. I spent five days trying, and my efforts did not work. Thanks. This was priceless. So he's, he was able to speed up his site significantly just by switching hosts after spending a bunch of time on other options. All right, enough about hosting. Let's talk about that server response time. And let's say you've already moved to an optimized host, and your time to first byte is because that is controlled mostly by your server and your hosting. Let's say that's still slow. Well, that's, to most people, that's a black box. And that's WordPress and PHP and running, PHP and MySQL running, and you can't look inside of it. Well, today, let's take a look inside. So I'm going to show you some, some tools to do that. But first, if you're diagnosing your site and trying to optimize it, then you're going to go through several steps. First, you're going to generate or wait for some traffic to the site and like load it up, or, or if it's live in production, you can just let some people hit it. And then you're going to review, you're going to need to have profiling enabled, and then you're going to review those results. And we're going to use New Relic for that today. And then you'll make a change, and you'll repeat. 
And the difference between th doing this and what most people are doing is instead of guessing for this step here, we're going to make step three based on what we learn in step two. And we're going to have real good data that's going to tell us what exactly is going on with WordPress and why it might be slow. So let's check out New Relic. So New Relic is an application performance monitoring tool. And there's a free version available. The pro version is the most useful. Um, you do need root level access to install it on your server. But it also is provided by several WordPress hosting providers. And I have personally diagnosed hundreds of performance issues across lots of sites in very little time. Thanks to New Relic. And so once we jump into New Relic, we're going to see an overview tab here. All right. I tried to turn that off, but obviously it wasn't successful. Um, and it's interesting. We'll see how long the, server, the average server response time is and how much time to spend in PHP and MySQL, but that's not really all that helpful. It's, it's nice to know, but um, what is really valuable is what New Relic added a couple years ago, and they added a feature which is WordPress-specific. And we'll actually break down WordPress and show you what's going on. So if we click on that page under the plugins and themes, it's going to show us how much time is actually being spent for each of the themes or, or each of the plugins or your theme. So for this example site that we tested out, we found out this A-B testing plugin here was taking 50% of the response time up. And it turned out for this particular site, they didn't actually need that plugin. So they were just able to turn that plugin off and the site got twice as fast as the Here's another example. If you need the more information, you need to dig down in. New Relic is something called transactions views. And that's for, for a single request, it, you can dig down in and find out where it spent its time. So I picked this screenshot here because this is a request that actually finished relatively quickly. But then there was a hook that ran at the end. And after it generated the whole page and was about to finish up, it went off and uh, ran this hook that synced some data to Jetpack, and that took an extra two seconds. So what would have been a 250 millisecond response turned into two and a half seconds, 10 times as slow as it should have been. Here's some examples. These are rather old, um, and just because a plugin shows up here doesn't mean it's a bad one. Um, could be configuration as a starting point. But uh, we, for this, whatever module was enabled with Jetpack here, we, turned, we just turned off Jetpack, and then boom. You can see right away the performance was they <coughs> improved significantly. Um, sometimes your WordPress admin uh, could be slow. And again, this is old and might not be applicable. But in this case, the US SEO plugin was making the, all of the admin pages a bit slower. So before New Relic, this is what I felt like trying to figure out problems when I very first started hosting sites and trying to, you know, figure out issues. So right away I set up New Relic and once I did that. <laughs> All right, some considerations though. It does impact performance pretty significantly I found, so uh, usually I'll turn it off uh, when it's not being used. But you can't go back in time, so if you have some kind of issue that only happens intermittently or you need to wait for it to happen, you might need to leave it on for a little while until, until the, that uh, request comes through. It's not the number of plugins on your site, but it's actually what they are doing. So, and a plugin showing up doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad plugin. Like I said, it, it's a starting point. So check the configuration settings, check if the plugin developers released a new version or something like that. And it may be fixed already, or you might just need to change or turn something off with it. And your theme can also be a major factor with a performance problem too. So. That's often harder to fix, so um, profile your site early. There are some guides too. So just skip over this, but if you pull the slides up, um, several uh, good guides on how to diagnose WordPress uh, problems uh, with New Relic. All right, a few a word about opt plugins, optimization plugins. Well, they can't optimize your raw site performance. What they're generally doing is just covering up performance issues. I generally don't recommend them, um, and you don't need them for the most case on better hosting. 
And so they can actually make server response times worse because they're doing a bunch of stuff to, maybe they're doing things to try and help your page load, but then it's actually affecting that server response time. Um, one possible exception is page caching, and hopefully I have a little time to talk about that later. So, I actually don't use New Relic anymore, so um, on our own hosting until earlier, uh, earlier this year, we did some performance upgrades, and we got, and our site's beginning, let's see, our servers were already a lot faster than in several places, but they were not quite as fast as some of the fastest providers that I had, had experience with. So we did some optimization, and our site got twice as fast. And this was more than the 20, 30% gain that I expected. And sites, it's, they're so fast now, at least on our platform, it's often not necessary or worth the time to optimize them more. So kind of the moral of this story is, optimized hosting was even more important than I realized. And so site, and I think there's even more room there to improve with that. All right, let's talk about the page loads. We've talked about hosting and the time to first bite and that bottleneck of getting the page to the browser, but then the browser needs to load and pull everything else up. So what affects the rest of that? So <clears throat> one thing is HTTP2, this is a server level thing too, so it needs to be enabled on your host. But there's a newer version of HTTP that speeds up things quite a bit. It does need, you do need to have HTTPS enabled to have an access <coughs> also click on your site. Been around for several years, has some great speed benefits, which I'm just going to bullet point through. But uh, some WordPress hosts are still not running it. <coughs> so, how do you check? So, just a few more things. Uh, a lot of things that have often been recommended to speed up sites, such as combining concatenating files, making trying to have multi, use multiple domains to have type one or like parallel requests going on aren't as important with HTTP or even necessary because of the way the protocol works. Inlining assets, other stuff like that. So make sure your host has HTTP2. And how can you check if sites have HTTP2? There's another Chrome extension that I've that I have installed. And it'll just light up in your toolbar a different color based on whether the site you're connected to has HTTP2 enabled or not. And that one, you can get that Chrome extension there. And when it's enabled, another way is you can actually go into the Chrome Dev Tools. It's a little more complicated. But you can uh, right click on the inside the network tab and show this extra column called protocol, and then it will show you what uh, the requests are being made with. All right, now fonts, images, asset compression. So uh, your hosting provider should have GZIP enabled on at a minimum. And that's your web page test will show up as compressed transfer. And then Brotly is a faster, higher compression uh, tool that's from Google and more advanced hosts offer that. And you can also check in uh, Chrome developer tools whether that's being enabled. If you click inside the network tab on one of the requests, you can look for a content encoding here. And if it has a VR next to it, then it's using Brotly. Image compression, this is a big one. So on web, web page test also has a pie chart down at the bottom that shows how much of your um, data or that page load is attributed to images. So scroll down to the bottom, take a look at that. If your purple here is really large um, and you did not get a good grade on compressing images, then you probably want to compress your images. Um, one cool plugin that I've seen that I like also helps you with scaling down huge images. So if you try to upload your 24 megabit um, pixel, like image up to your website, it'll scale it down to something reasonable, and that's Insanity. And it can resize huge files on upload. You can adjust the image quality, uh, and you can also um, you can convert PNGs to JPEGs. If you have a PNG and it doesn't have transparency and it's large as, or it looks like a photo, it should be a JPEG. Uh, and you can also bulk resize your images. And here's a screenshot with a couple settings that you might want to adjust. All right, so I'm going to skip these. There's some more advanced topics. If you really need to, if you've gone through all these things, you need even more speed out of your site, then uh, you might look at uh, lazy loading of images, something called server push, or adding a CDN. Um, some of those are a little more complicated, but the CDN is often quite easy, uh, especially with Cloudflare. But save that stuff for last after you've done optimized everything else. And caching. So there are different types of caching. I, 
which is the exact, I think, is going to give a talk this afternoon about caching, so check that one out if you're interested in that. Um, page caching, object caching, I'm not going to go into details about this, except page caching is a, is a common one. Is it the solution for a slow site? And I say no. And caching was designed, and it's great for scaling websites with a lot of traffic. So I would argue that your site should be fast without caching. And <clears throat> caching on a site only hides poor performance, and often only part of the time. Use as a last resort after you've uh, tried everything else. Where does page caching fall down? Well, the WordPress admin is not going to help you there if you're working in the back end if that's slow. If you're logged in, oftentimes page caching is disabled, so the front end of your site while you're developing it could be slower. If you've got a large site with a lot of pages, they might not be cached effectively. If you have content that's customized to the user, again, you have issues. Caches can also expire, get flushed. And that next request, if it doesn't hit that cache and you haven't optimized your site, it's going to be quite slow for that visitor. So, summary. Yep. You want your site to be as fast as possible without the page cache. I found out this really good article and a quote from it. Two is, it should be possible to turn off page caching on a regular day with normal traffic and not get nervous about it. So, and even on a busy day, it shouldn't crash your website. Um, for WordPress, so most managed hosting providers uh, actually do provide page caching. Um, it's not, if you can't get your time to first byte under, let's say, 200 milliseconds, or you just want your site to be faster, then look into it or uh, try to get uh, that working. It'll often be noticeably faster if um, your hosting provider is not, isn't high performing, or if your site uses heavy technology or uses certain things like WooCommerce and page builders, certain things tend to start, put all those together and uh, can slow a, site, a WordPress site down considerably. And uh, yeah, so you're, <clears throat> Save it for last, test it out, you might, you might still want it at the end, but try and speed up your site as much as you can first. All right, I'm doing all right. So, summary. Measure your performance first. Pick a good hosting provider or switch to one. If it, your time to first flight is still slow, do some profiling with New Relic. Oh, sorry. Optimize your images. Um, use a plugin for page caching if your host doesn't provide it already. And add a CDN if you have, your visitors are spread around globally. Um, or your service far away from your audience or yourself. And then feel free to ask for help, ask your hosting provider for help, ask a developer, ask someone here at WordCamp. So. Alright, and looks like I have a little time. And so let me do just a quick, I'll do a quick demo of some of the tools that we have, including for testing your site performance. So this is our website. If you come here, Click on the little sign up button. Go out here, I'm just going to create a new account. All right. Just going to confirm this. And then once I've landed inside my account here, I can click this add an existing site. And so I can pick a site here. I've set up a test site on GoDaddy. Thanks, GoDaddy. They gave me a great deal. I think it was a dollar a month for the domain included, so 12 bucks for a year. And so when you click this, it goes off and it looks up. Well, if I switch test and site, it might work. <laughs> there we go. This will go off and looks up some information about the website, kind of where is it hosted, uh, where is DNS being provided, and stuff like that. And I can then click Add Site, and I'll go over and it will add it to my dashboard here in Site Site District. And once that's done, it takes a. I'm going to actually skip through this next step here, but I'll come back to it and install a plugin for migrating a copy of the site. But just from adding a site in here with the domain name, um, I've got a few tools available to my to me over here on the. On the side, I can run a web page test directly from here, and it'll keep the results inside Site District, so I can kick that off, and then I'll pop that in a new tab. It'll probably take a little bit to run. And I can do a speed test, and this is one of the cool tools that we have built in. This will go off, and it'll 
get up to 30 pages on, well, you can actually control the number of requests on the site and figure out what the server response time is throughout the site. So this will go off and crawl through the site. I don't actually have much on the site, but just hitting different pages on the site. And it looks like they're all coming in at right about the same speed. And that'll go off and finish in a little bit. But give you an idea of throughout your site how fast is the server response time on your site. And I haven't had to do anything complicated. Pretty much just add my URL and click a few other things in here. And it'll finish with a summary. But I'll just close it for now. Then go back over here. I want to actually import my site. I can just pop open this dialog and install the plugin. And so. I think that's my username. So I can put in any WordPress administrator, username, and password and try to go off. And our server will go off and try to install the plugin on that remote site. You know what? I, oh, yay, it worked. And then I can just click through, click import site, and it'll go off and it'll verify it and try to pull in a copy of this site. So while that runs, it's, a, it's basically just a fresh WordPress install, 2017 theme, nothing special on it. So it should be pretty quick. But we can jump over here and see the web page test results from running it there. So we can see, if we click in here to the Filmster view, we can see what's kind of going on. So on this test site here, so the user was looking at a blank screen until about 1.2 seconds and started to get this gray background fading in, and then at 1.4 seconds, the site's actually showing up there. See how long it took the, that site to load. So that's web page test there. We we'll come back over here. That's still going. See, um, and then on the repeat view, this is with the page cache and browser caching enabled. Should be a bit faster. We'll see here. Blank screen, blank screen, and then boom, everything appears at one second. So it's a little bit faster. Like I said, very light site, just a 2017 base install. But that's how a web page test works and how you, what you can see inside of there. And then, this is still setting up. Let's see, what else can I show off? Three minutes, all right. Hopefully this will finish up and I'll be able to run just a couple more tests real quick. If you've got your questions, get your questions ready. I'll see if I have time for those. If I don't, if don't have time for questions after this, or I'll just let that run. I mean, I'll just take a couple right now. So, got one in the back right there. Uh, you haven't said anything about um, Google PageSpeed Insights as a diagnostic tool, and so I'm just curious what your thinking is about that. <laughs> so the question was about uh, Google PageSpeed Insights, and I think it gives you some great insights. Um, but again, I would say still focus on what your users are actually seeing. So back to like, how long does it take until that content is showing up to the user in, you know, in front of their face? And you can use web page test to test mobile versions and different connection speeds, stuff like that. So I would personally focus more on that. Um, you could use it as a guide for helping optimize that, but then just keep your end goal in mind. All right. To go ahead, we'll do it right there. What do you suggest for like areas with slower internet speeds? So the question was for so like there's there's areas within this within the country where like not like Seattle where they have 100 meg download where they're operating on satellites that have 4 meg download. Yeah, if you've got visitors that are have a very slow internet connection, then yeah, that's a tough one. You're gonna Again, just test it as well as you can. If they're located far away from your server, get a CDN in place there. But uh, see how it's performing, and then see what's slowing it down. Is that your is that your time to first bite, or is it your are images or some other things loading it down? And you can do as much as you can. It's kind of a diminishing diminishing returns. You optimize what you can, and then to really speed it up even more, it gets harder as it goes. But test it, and then kind of try and see what's going on there. And web page test, I think, will we'll help guide you on that. So once we've imported this site here, we can click this tool and it'll actually load up the two sites side by side and click this test again. I'll kind of test it over and over a few times, see how long that actual page load is for the main um, site. 
the main uh, test. So we've imported a copy. This is the exact same site. Nothing has changed. We're bringing it over from GoDaddy in this case, over to the site district. And you can see this, the speed difference for loading. Now if we want to test throughout the pages that speed crawl that I showed you, we can do a crawl of both sites simultaneously. And this will go through the pages on you know, up to 30 pages on both copies of the site and show you how fast they are. So Does your import include plugins? Yeah, so our the import includes the plugins. It grabs the all of, all the files are underneath your main folder and um, and the database and just copies them over and restores. I think we exclude like if you're using backups and stuff like that, we exclude backup archives and stuff like that. So we don't pull a bunch of extra data. And so that's that ours in this case, the site is five times faster, nothing changed, just by switching hosting providers. All right, um, that's that for the quick demo. I won't show New Relic too much because we're out of time. But uh, I think all I had left was the, the link back to the slides again and more questions. If any. Go ahead. Oftentimes, yes.
So I was using APM, which is Application Performance Monitoring. And so it's a PHP extension that is installed on the server. It's very easy to install, but you do need access to install PHP extensions. It's like one command on the server to get it up and running. Yes? I'm curious whether you operate with uh, multiple locations so that you can be passed to people. So we're not, do you, we have just our servers are located in one location right now. We haven't spread out. There's some of the other hosting providers. I just, I know Kinsta is geographic. They have use Google Cloud Engine. They're all over the world. Uh, I think Pantheon is, just has locations in the U.S. Um, so we're, we haven't branched out globally yet. Our server is in Northern California right now, so on Amazon's infrastructure. So. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, I've I think I'm done, so thanks again everyone for coming. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, we'll be right back.